Today we have six of the most frequently used incorrect dispute reasons, and these results are coming directly from a seminar that I ran today here locally in Las Vegas, all right? And I'm sharing these results with you because I hear these all the time, every single week on calls and in comments and emails and everything. So this is why we're doing this, okay? This is good stuff. All right, so we're starting with number one, which is I have no contract with you. Honey, unfortunately, that is not gonna remove your collection, which is where I normally see this, okay? So here's the deal. Let's say that you get credit with Capital One, right? When you sign up with them, your original agreement, the terms and conditions and all that great stuff is directly with them, right? It's between you and Capital One. However, if you read the terms and conditions, which most people don't, you're agreeing that in the event that you fail to pay or fail to pay on time, that they can legally sell or transfer the account to anybody that they choose to, and now your legal obligation is going to be with them. And yes, this holds up in court. So honey, no that is not going to work to remove that account. And all you're going to do is waste a ton of time. And guess what? The longer you dispute, the harder it is to remove. So don't use this dispute reason to remove it. So instead, I actually have a bunch of videos that I'm gonna link down in the description that show you and explain to you and prove to you just how simple it is to dispute the right way to get deletions with Portfolio Recovery and Midland and Calvary and all of them, okay? So when you're done watching this video, not right now, stop it, don't go there now. When you're done watching this video, head down in the description, you're gonna find the videos for portfolio and all of them, okay? Now, while you're down in the description, first of all, make sure to like this video because I'm giving you a lot of value and I wanna make sure that this is actually valuable, right? So make sure to hit that like, subscribe if you haven't done so, and use the link to join the wait list for my brand new Google Sheets live letter automation app because if you do any sort of disputes, whether for yourself or for anybody else, then you're gonna to wanna to check it out because it's gonna save you time and money. And guess what, honey? We cannot get back our time. So that is why I'm saving it for you, okay? So we're moving on to number two, which is this account needs to be removed because it has a balance in its e charge off. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I hear this all the time. If it's a charge off, it shouldn't have a balance. No, and guess what? I've specifically, specifically mentioned multiple times over 500 videos that yes, if there is an unpaid charge off, it's gonna show a balance. Dude, you didn't pay it. Why would it not have a balance if it hasn't been transferred or sold? or canceled, right? So yes, if you didn't pay it, then yes, there's going to be a balance, okay? I'm not really sure why or where this information comes from. Maybe some video somewhere was someone maybe doing a video like this where they're saying, oh no, if there's a balance on a charge off, then it's wrong. Uh-uh, mm, 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 okay? Yes, I'm making like a little bit of a joke out of this, but no. <laughs> No, it doesn't work like that. If you didn't pay it, there's gonna be a balance until the debt is canceled or you actually pay it, okay? So let's talk about something else real quick. As a side note, here's the reason why people think that they don't have to pay charge-offs. And I heard this specifically this week on a call with a very nice gentleman who explained why he thinks this. And this is a general consensus of how this works. So he said that they basically are double dipping. And I had to explain to him that no, charge off, write off, those are just accounting terms, okay? So with these large companies, there's like a couple different ways of accounting and all that kind of stuff, right? We're not gonna get into that, that's not what this video is about, but one of them is to first claim the debt as income, right? First they say, hey, this is income, and then when you don't pay, they have to go and adjust their taxes so that they're not paying taxes on money they didn't receive. Why would they wanna pay taxes against something that you didn't pay them. It's not income, they have to adjust it. And that's why it is an accounting term, write off, charge off. It has nothing to do with whether you owe them or not, okay? And we're not gonna go into like, you know, insurance and all of that. Like, dude, if you didn't pay it, use common sense, be a grown up. it's your debt, you gotta pay, okay? That's really what it is. Now, 
regardless of whether, you know, the whole you got to pay it thing, like, I'm not going to retract what I'm saying, but like, if it's your debt, it's your debt, okay? And the great thing about factual disputes is that we're not saying this is not mine, this is mine, I don't owe this, all that kind of stuff. We're saying remove this account because of these inaccuracies, these violations taken directly from the credit report, okay? So that's the beauty of this program. That's the beauty of this process. That's the beauty of this strategy, all right? So let's move on to number three, collection accounts. This is the wrong open date. So you got to understand open dates with collections. They're not the actual open date of the account. And so many people get it wrong that they're like, well, I see this collection and this is actually for AT&T from five years ago, but it says 2021. And I'm like, dude, here's the deal. That's the date assigned. It's not the actual open date. Like that is not the date that the account was actually open. That is only the date that the collection agency was assigned the collection, okay? So that is not a true open date. Now, yes, you can get the true open date by asking the original creditor for it or even asking the collector for it. And yeah, I mean, you can probably dispute based off of this information, but as far as going after an open date on a collection account, that is not the true open date. That is the date assigned, okay? And you cannot remove that account, generally speaking, by stating this is not the right open date, remove the account. There are a plethora of other legitimate ways to remove collections. And um, we're not talking about that in this video, but I promise you they most definitely work and you might wanna check out for third-party collections, the validation of debt method. And I have a ton of videos on this information, all right? Now we're gonna go over to number four, this account is not mine. And guess what? If you want to commit credit repair suicide, then go ahead, my friend. Go ahead and dispute this account is not mine. Because guess what? If it is, then you're screwed. All right. If you don't want to commit credit repair suicide, then you are not going to want to dispute an account that actually belongs to you as not yours. All right. There's a fazillion other ways that you can get the account removed. Stop using things that are not going to get results. Every single thing that we do needs to generate a result that we want, and this is not the way to do it, all right? So moving on, account is in litigation. This goes with number four, don't lie. Why do you need to lie when you have 17 dispute reasons just looking at an account right off the bat going through the elements? There's nothing that you need to lie about. Factual base disputes work because you're using the facts taken directly from the credit report that the bureaus, the creditors, the collectors are giving you, okay? This information is here for a reason. Let's use it to get our deletions or our corrections in the event of a late payment or something that just needs to be fixed on the credit report, okay? So there's no reason with factual based disputes that you need to come up with lies. Now, does it work to remove it from a credit report? Yeah, sure, sometimes. I mean, anything can, right? I mean, you can spit out your credit report and an account can come off. Now, but does that mean that it's something that you can count on? No, does it mean that it's illegal? No, does it mean that you should do it? No, what it does mean is that you are lying. It does mean that if the account comes off and then comes back on because it was verified that the account number one is yours and number two is not in litigation, then unfortunately the third thing that I'm gonna tell you is that it's gonna be even more difficult to get that account off permanently, okay? So let's go on to number six. And this is delete for double jeopardy. Now I see delete for double jeopardy used in conjunction with this account is reporting a balance. I see it rep uh, with um, two different collections. I see it with a collection and a charge off. I'm gonna tell you the true meaning of double jeopardy, okay? And there's two examples I'm gonna give you. If you have AT&T reporting a collection, but the account was also now transferred over to another collection agency and they are both reported on your credit report regardless of whether there's a balance or not, then yes, that is double jeopardy. And I'm gonna explain why. Only in the event of collections, this is only relevant to collections. In the event that you have two collections on your credit report for the same account, only the account holder for collections should report on your credit report. So yes, technically you can use double jeopardy to get the accounts removed, however, Normally it's for reporting of the balance 
between two different furnishers for the same account, okay? So let's just use Capital One and Portfolio again. So if you have Capital One reporting a balance of $100 and Portfolio Recovery reporting for that same account a balance of $100, now not only is there a huge problem in the fact that the account is not reported as transferred or sold on Capital One and they're reporting a balance, but now you also have that same account jacking up your numbers on your credit report negatively, all right? So you can use double jeopardy to get this taken off. So it's bottom line, the one account should be reported by one holder of the account, okay? Now, there can be two different furnishers reporting it as long as only one of them is showing the balance. And um, so that's why I said you can basically get away with it with collections only because of the way that collections work that only um, the, the current owner, holder, assigner, whatever of the account should be reporting, all right? So anyways, these were the six most frequently used incorrect dispute reasons and that is it for tonight go down into the description use the link to join the waitlist for the brand new google sheets tool that's going to do all of this work for you so that you don't have to wonder if you're using the wrong dispute reason or the wrong dispute reason type um and if you want to save time and you want to save money if you're tired of doing all this number one yourself number two the wrong way number three spending a ton of time um, inside of credit repair software that doesn't work that doesn't get results that use templates that doesn't have you know ability to do all the things that mine does and um yeah otherwise hit that like subscribe if you haven't done so check out the other links in the description why not because you're already going to be there right and that is it for tonight all right i will see you later i will see you tomorrow i'll holler at you tomorrow i hope you have a great evening because i am recording this on the 30th in the technically the 31st right because it's like two o'clock in the morning but anywho i'll see you later today technically and have a great one and be safe bye